The first thing you'll notice when you launch Setlist Maker 2.3 and open a database is that there are a couple new items in the main menu. Instead of Songs, Shows, and Styles, we now have Songs, Shows, Smart Lists, and Settings. And there's no longer an Edit button at the top of the main menu to edit your database. Instead, you're going to tap the Settings menu. And this menu contains a breakdown of the different sections of database settings. So instead of one giant window where you can edit all your database settings, we're now organizing it into five different windows. It's a little easier to manage. Um, the same settings that you're used to are there, and it should be self-explanatory which section that they're in. As soon as you open one of these edit windows, you'll notice another difference. Instead of save and cancel on one side and copy and delete on the other, I've got save and cancel on opposite sides, so it's harder to press the wrong button. And then down at the bottom, we have big copy and delete buttons. And that's the same whether you're editing your database, or you're editing a song, uh, or anything else in the app. Uh, if you're looking to delete something, edit it and scroll down to the bottom. You'll see that big red delete button. And the same for copy. Now, along with the five sections of database settings, uh, the styles menu that was in the main menu is now moved here because you don't need to access that very often. And we have a new menu called Set Names. And this works similar to Styles, where you can define a list of set names. And then you can apply those set names to the sets in your show. Now let me show you how this works. I'm going to go back to Shows and look at the FP Gardens show. And I have my generic Set 1, Set 2, and Set 3 headings. Um, but a lot of people have asked for a way to name those headings, and so now we can do that. Since I've defined my three set names as Set1, Set2, and Encore, now I can open my Show Settings, and by the way, instead of an Edit button up here, we now have a Settings button down here to edit your show. And there's an option in the Show Settings window for set names. And right now it's empty, but if I tap the Edit button, I see my list of set names, and I only have three defined. I want to use all three, so let me just select them all and save. And then now I see them listed here, and I'll save again. And now my show has set one, which is the same as the default, set two, and encore. So I can set up any number of set names in advance. I can have one called extras, or one called long set, short set, etc. And then I can edit a show and select which set names I want to use for that show. Now, the number of set names I sh select should match the number of sets in my show, and then Setlist Maker will just apply those selected sets in order to the sets in my show. I have three sets here, and I've picked three set names, and so that'll be set one, set two, and set three. But let's move on to another new feature in that main menu. And we've been looking inside the settings menu, but now we're going to look at another new menu item in the main menu called Smart Lists. And this opens a submenu containing a bunch of what are basically predefined and automatically populated shows. The first batch that say songs by name, songs by artist, those just include all the active songs in your database. But they're sorted uh, by these different fields. So song by, songs by name has all my songs sorted alphabetically. And as you can see, there's shortcuts as well. So I can jump to a starting letter. Same with artist, label, etc. Now the advantage of this smart list is that a lot of people have asked for a way to just go into the app in a performance situation and just quickly pick a song. So in other words, you haven't made a set list in advance but you want to have all your songs available for quick access. And so smart lists are a way to do that. If you want to pick your songs by name, you can go to the songs by name smart list and scroll through the titles and pick the song you're looking for. If you're using labels or styles or the other field to organize your songs, uh, you can sort your list that way and hopefully make it easy to quickly find the song you're looking for. Now, um, you can also hit the perform button when you're showing a smart list and it'll work the same way as the perform button for a regular show and I don't have very many charts attached here but here's one and so I can also flip through my charts just like I could with a regular show 
The next batch of smart lists are for the particular styles that you've defined in your database. There's one smart list for each style, and these smart lists only contain the songs that match that style. So I have a style called Energetic, and these are just the 20 songs that match that. So if you want to find songs by style, you can use this list that shows all the songs, but they're grouped, or you can just show a particular group. Now if you have great ideas for other smart lists, let me know. I can add more to this list, but hopefully this will be a good start in solving this problem of picking songs at random out of the app in a performance. That's been one of the most requested features for Setlist Maker. And another highly requested feature is more options for viewing charts. Let me go to another database I have set up where I have more charts entered. Okay, here's a show with 11 songs, and every, every song has a chart attached to it. Now, first of all, in the main view, when you tap a chart, um, instead of seeing the default iOS window that displays your chart and has an open-in menu, we're now using a custom window. And those of you who have been using Setlist Maker for a while remember this, because this is what we had in an earlier version, uh, and then I replaced it with the built-in window, but uh, we lost some functionality here, so I brought it back. One of the things we're getting back here is the ability to play your recordings from the uh, chart view and to go ahead and look at other charts while your recording is playing, skip around in the recording, and play and pause, etc. Uh, so that's helpful for practicing because obviously you can read through your chart and listen to the recording at the same time. Another feature that we lost that is now back is the ability to send a chart to somebody by email. So we have an email button here, but we still have the same options uh, to print and to open the chart in another app or send it to another app. So this should be the best of both worlds uh, between the last two versions. When you're in this main chart view, you can also uh, pinch to zoom in and out. And for the first time, you can double tap to zoom in on a column of text. And uh, so I'm zooming in on the lyrics here. I can zoom in on the chords just for demonstration. That's not very useful, but uh, that's the standard iOS functionality for double tapping. I can also just single tap and hide the toolbars. And single tap to bring them back again. Now that's in the main view. When I'm in the perform window and I view a chart, I have a couple more options. Um, First of all, I can double tap to zoom again, or pinch zoom. And uh, I can also tap to hide the toolbars, but only in portrait mode, not in landscape mode as I am here. Let me uh, just take a minute to rotate this around, demonstrate that. OK, so now we're in uh, portrait mode for the moment. Come on. It's kind of hard to keep it in the camera frame here, but now we're in portrait mode. And I can single tap and. I have full screen mode. And of course you can just tap again, bring your toolbars back. Okay, let's go back to our landscape mode here, get positioned in my frame. All right. So remember, a single tap will hide your toolbars, uh, but um, only in the portrait view, not in the landscape view. A double tap will zoom, and you can also pinch to zoom. And this is all standard iOS functionality, so uh, hopefully this will be intuitive for you. And one other update to the chart display in the Perform window is that now you can view charts on an iPhone or an iPod Touch. This used to only be available on the iPad. Uh, but now you'll see this exact same layout in either landscape or portrait mode on the smaller screen devices. And one other update to the chart functionality is that you can now attach a JPEG image as a chart. So if you edit a song and tap the chart button, you'll see all the files that you've copied into the app. And by the way, the files now show the file extension and the last modified date, so if you have a couple files with the same name but different extension, you can tell them apart. Um, if I scroll down, I'll see that I've added 
let's see here, a couple JPEGs uh, to my app, and so I can select those. Um, or if I have a, a JPEG in my photo library, I can tap this new button here, Photos, and this brings up a window where I can browse uh, my photo library and select a, an image that way. And uh, some people have asked for this, by the way, because they're taking a photo of a printed out document and then they want to attach it, and so this will let you do that. Now let's go back to the database settings and look at some new features here. And I have a new submenu here called Hardware Input, and this contains sections for Bluetooth, MIDI System, and MIDI Note Input. And these expand on our options for controlling Setlist Maker with an external device. So previously you could use a Bluetooth foot pedal that could send left and right arrow commands into the app, and those could be used to change songs or change pages. Well now from Bluetooth we can accept left, right, up, or down arrows. So a Bluetooth device that can send all four of those messages. Uh, you can control four different things. And we have a lot more things that we can do with those messages. So if you tap uh, left arrow, for example, I have a list of all the different um, actions that I can trigger with the left arrow message. Uh, so I can change pages or songs. Uh, I can scroll up and down, which is a little different than changing a page. It's just scrolling a little bit at a time, like if you were clicking the uh, scroll bar on a computer. I can show and hide the chart in the performance window. I can start and stop the recording, start and stop the tempo, or play the starting pitch if I've defined that for the song. So I have a lot more options for controlling the app uh, with a hands-free device. The MIDI system input works the same way. If you have a foot pedal that sends MIDI instead of Bluetooth, uh, you can connect that to Setlist Maker, and we have some similar options. For a MIDI start-stop message, we can trigger most of the same actions. Um, notice, though, that you can only go forward through your set list, not backwards, because uh, most foot pedals just send the same message over and over again. They don't send separate messages when you start or stop. Song select is another MIDI message that Setlist Maker can respond to, uh, but this is only linked to a couple different actions. But basically, if you send in a song number uh, from a MIDI device, we can either use that to select a song number in Setlist Maker or to select a page number. So you can use it to change pages or songs. But we also have a section for MIDI note input, and this is for MIDI devices that can send in MIDI note messages. Uh, you can define the channel that you want to listen to messages on, and then you can define an action for all these different note numbers. And now you can define all the, action, all the possible actions again. So if you have a drum pad or even a keyboard and you want to send messages in from that device, you can really take advantage of all the different automation actions that are in Setlist Maker now. Now the uh, Bluetooth input is included in the core functionality. The MIDI input uh, requires the MIDI upgrade. All the MIDI functionality in Setlist Maker is linked to one single upgrade, and the price for that upgrade is $299. And uh, the first time you try to use one of these features, you'll be prompted to uh, purchase that upgrade if you haven't already. Now some related functionality is now available in the general settings, and these are the song selection actions. And these are actions that get triggered when you select a song in the perform window, uh, regardless of how you select it. If you select it from a foot pedal or from MIDI, or if you select it just by tapping it on the screen, you can uh, trigger any of these actions at the same time. So this basically lets you link actions together. In other words, you can use a MIDI pedal to select the next song, uh, but then you can configure this section to play the recording for that song when the song is selected. So you don't have to link the foot pedal to the song selection and to the recording playback. Uh, you can just link the pedal to one action and then from that action trigger additional actions. Now in the last version the only option that was available was send MIDI program changes and basically this expands on that idea. Um, in addition to playing the recording, the tempo clicks, or starting pitch when you select a song, you can also send MIDI song selections, or you can send raw MIDI. Now let me explain how both of these work. Um, 
I mentioned that you can use a MIDI input device to send a song number and then select that song in Setlist Maker. Now this option uh, works the opposite way. This is if you want Setlist Maker to control another MIDI device. You can define a MIDI song number for each song in Setlist Maker. And then if you enable this option, when you select that song, Setlist Maker will send that MIDI message out to your other MIDI devices. And then now for the first time, you can also just enter any uh, MIDI messages that you want to into Setlist Maker and also send those messages when you select a song. Let's take a look at the song edit window. And uh, here's a new field for the MIDI song number. So this would correspond to a song number defined in your other MIDI hardware. Um, I need to enable these options actually. Um, send MIDI program changes, song selections, and raw MIDI. And now if I go back into the song edit window, I have uh, my MIDI program changes. This works the same as in the last version. And the song number that we just saw and then there's a field for uh, sending raw MIDI and here you can just enter in any uh, MIDI message, it could be a system exclusive message, it could be uh, continuous controller messages, anything you want to as long as you know how to construct the code or get the code from another device you can just paste it in here and it will be sent um, it will be sent before the program changes when you select a song just a couple more quick updates to show you. In the uh, tempo options, we have all the same options as before, except we now have a click pan. So you can pan your click sound to the left or to the right, or anywhere in between, by dragging the slider. And now throughout the app, whenever you see a picker, like this uh, style picker, you'll now notice uh, cancel and select buttons above the picker, which make the selection process a little more intuitive and also a little X button that lets you remove the value for the picker. This is especially useful if you edit your show settings and you've entered a date or time because previously there was no way to remove those entries. But now you can just tap the X button uh, to clear them out and then save your record. Anyway, there's actually a lot more changes in Setlist Maker 2.3. You can read the complete list on the website if you click the release notes. And as usual, most of these changes came directly from user suggestions, so I hope they're useful to those who suggested them, and also to everyone else. Anyway, thanks for using Setlist Maker. If you like it, please leave a review, and keep sending your suggestions.